had two questions. Um, how much uh, do you think uh, Saudi Arabia and the Wahhabi religion has contributed to this? And the other one is, how much in civil si society in the Arab countries are people talking about your ideas of change? Is it you know, a few isolated people? Or is there really some movement to move in the direction you describe? Well, the second question first, I, I think the vast majority of people in the Arab world, and we know this from evidence, this isn't just me saying nice things in Manhattan, survey evidence from Gallup, from the Arab Center in Doha, from Zogby, going back 20 years, and it's all available online. Go look at the survey evidence that's available from the Arab barometer surveys. The very serious polling all across the Arab world has shown us for the last 20 years or so, which is from when we have polling, that the values of the vast majority of people in the Arab world, who are mostly Muslim, about 95% Muslim, the values are values that seek justice, uh, stability, mercy, equality, opportunity, uh, participation, accountability, democracy, if you want to call it that. The values that people have in them and want to see implemented are very similar to your values and European values and, 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 and global values. They've just never been given the opportunity to implement them in any way. And we saw what happened with the uprisings. When they were given a chance in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Libya, they immediately ran out and 90% of the people voted and they created 95 political parties. There was a thirst for participation, for accountability, for citizen rights. Uh, only the Tunisians uh, broke through. And studies have been done by American scholars that look at Arab values versus the values of other people around the world, and they show that the, the values of Arabs and Muslims and the values of Americans are very, very close. There's a couple of areas where they diverge. Uh, woman status is one of them. Uh, the role of religion in public life is another one. Muslims in the Arab world, the majority of Arabs, want their public life to be, uh, to be influenced by religious values. And what do they mean by religious values? They mean justice, equality, etc. But they don't want religious people to rule them. They don't want to be ruled like uh, Iran. They don't want theocracy. They want a, they want a participatory society in which uh, the, the, the fundamental Muslim, which are the Abrahamic values, are manifested in society. So there's no problem with those values. The problem is that people just have never been given a chance to implement them. And we saw what happened when they were given the chance now. They tried seriously. And people talk about this all the time. But uh, one day, they will be able to implement it, we hope, in other countries. The Saudi Wahhabi question is an is a important issue, which people talk about all the time in the region. But it's not talked about too much in public, because most people want to get contracts from the Saudis, or jobs from the Saudis, or, or they, they want to sell them something. Or The Saudis have a lot of money. They also have a lot of moral force, being the guardians of, of, of Sunni Islam, and the holy places of Islam. I mean, they and, and Azhar and Egypt are the two centers of serious religious uh, legitimacy or moral leadership or whatever we want to call it. Uh, but the Wahhabi influence has been a problem, clearly, for many years in funding and, and promoting a, a, hard for, a harsh form of Islam. Um, I don't think the Saudis would would willingly uh, promote things like al-Qaeda and ISIS. I'm sure they wouldn't. Uh, anybody who knows the Saudis and the leadership, even if they might criticize them for promoting too much fundamentalist, hard Islam uh, of the Wahhabi variety, um, uh, would not accuse the Saudis of deliberately uh, promoting the kind of criminal activity that ISIS uh, does. But ISIS and al-Qaeda and others are a uh, a function of a trend in society uh, that has partly been uh, promoted or pushed by the kind of Wahhabi uh, uh, teachings in schools and mosques. All over. They've been funding these all over the region in Pakistan and all over the Islamic world for 40, 50 years. Uh, so there, I would say there's an indirect uh, a problem of the relationship of Wahhabi uh, dissemination uh, with uh, the the tough Islamic response. Remember, the religion is the only thing that Muslims have in the Arab world to respond to their discontent. It's the same as black people in the United States in the 1950s. 
They had nowhere else to go but the churches. They couldn't go to the law, they couldn't go to elections, they couldn't go to the press, they couldn't go to civil society, they had no rights. They could only go to the churches, and that's where the civil rights movement was incubated, mobilized, organized, and implemented. And they were lucky to have good leaders in the civil rights movement. And the system in the United States was a system that responded. When people challenged uh, black segregation in the courts, they, they won cases, and finally the national leadership responded. In the Arab world, we don't have that process. Uh, and only the only breakthrough we had was when hundreds of millions of people, well, not hundreds of millions, but tens of millions of people went out onto the streets in peaceful demonstrations five years ago to start the process of change, which only c completed itself in Tunisia. But it's important to remember that you know Egypt, Yemen, uh, Tunisia, and Libya, all four started very serial, very serious constitutional transitions with incredibly uh, vibrant debates about really important issues. Um, but only the T Tunisians broke through. But if you go back and look what happened in 2011, 2012, there was massive uh, participation in many Arab countries seeking political reform and change. Mm -hmm.